What's going on guys, Etika from the Edible World Network here, and for the sake of this video, even though I know I do have an established fan base, I'm going to be speaking to the general public because I know a lot of people are going to be inquiring about the DX Racer gaming table because there's not really that many videos out there. So rather than talk to my own personal audience like I usually do, I'm going to be talking to the general mass. So. I'll be pretty damn general. Also, if you do want to skip to a part that's further on in the video, I'll also have annotations like a table of content in the description as well. So you can, you know, click those if you want to skip through certain things that I'm saying. But I highly advise you stick through to the whole video. So who am I? My name is Desmond Amofa, and I go by the nickname Etico Online. And what I do for a living is post YouTube videos. <laughs> At least not of late, because I've been doing a lot of revamps in the background. But my main primary, primary source of income is posting YouTube videos. So, you know, whether that's your income or if you're like a film director or you're working a cubicle at a business or something along those lines all those things share one thing in common that you're going to have to sit down for long periods of time so now just some history with the DX racer brand I actually had this chair given to me by one of my viewers he purchased the chair for me um, he's somebody who was in the military and he was really feeling bad because I did complain about back pains for sitting in my chair previous one that I had for long periods of time in some of my videos and he hit me up and he was like you know what dude I want to see you you know do more videos and the best way to do that is to get you a new chair now once this offer was on the table I began to think to my and by the way I hope that guy is okay because you know he's in the military and I haven't heard from him recently I, I'm really praying for your safety dude I don't even believe in a god but I, I'm praying for your safety the thing is, is that once this offer was on the table I was saying to myself okay then you know what since he has the offer out there for me to get a chair on him I need to make sure that I get a chair which will last, which will not have the problems that most conventional office chairs have, and something that's suitable for my height. Now, if you don't know, I'm six foot six, which translates to almost 200 centimeters, and that's that's a lot of height. You know, I, I got a lot going on, and the the problem that people who are tall like me face is that. A lot of times nowadays, you know, chairs and other conventional methods that you usually relax in, like, you know, train station chairs, office chairs, all those, usually are made for people with a more average height. And 6'6 six, six is definitely above average. So we find it difficult to see arrangements or accommodations that are suitable for us, that are comfortable for long periods of time. So I knew it was going to be a challenge right away. Now, of course, when you search premium chairs, DX Racer definitely pops up. And of course, I know all of you guys are saying to yourselves, you know, this is a, I mean, it looks like a badass chair, obviously, but you know, is it really worth the money? DX Racer obviously puts a premium on these things, and you're paying a lot more money for a DX Racer than you would other chairs out there. You can probably get an office chair for a fucking fraction of the price in other places like Office Max, Staples, um, Ikea, but you're, you're saying to yourself, is the DX Racer difference really worth that premium price? And to be honest with you guys, I've been using this chair for quite a while now, and I gotta say, to be honest, yeah, I feel like it is. This chair, it's not like other brands where they inflate the price simply just because of the brand name, but rather this chair does bring a lot to the table. And here's another thing which I want to address because a lot of people sometimes complain about these chairs, but the, the problem with it is that these chairs are all designed for different heights. They have, a, they have a plethora of chairs on their websites and it's usually difficult to try to pinpoint exactly which chair is right for you. So it does require a little bit more research. I do wish that DX Racer did organize their chair section to be a bit more informational as to what chair is more suitable for what kind of person. You know, something that would just be a lot more, you know, upfront. Their website did undergo a renovation recently that does look a lot better than when I purchased, or rather when, um, when um, the contributor purchased this chair for me, but still, it can go under a few more improvements. People usually complain because the chair is either too big or too small, but they probably didn't really put the research in there to try to see exactly what size suits them. And if you're a taller person like me, I suggest the DX Racer King Series chair if you're anything above six foot, because anything below that, and you're going to have issues with back pains and whatnot because the chair is not going to be suitable for your size. The greatest thing about this chair, which I think a lot of people who maybe do gaming or still live with their parents or still live with roommates or whatever, some chairs get creaky. But I've had this DX Racer for quite a while now, and as you can see, there's absolutely no creaking going on. I am actually amazed by this because every computer chair, office chair that I've ever had in the past has always wound up creaking at some point, and it gets really bad to, certain, to some extent, you know? Where you're like, eh, 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 eh. So that entire breakdown was basically to explain that DX Racer has good chairs, expensive chairs, but you get a lot of return for your money. And this chair has lasted me for a long time, and I think it's gonna last me for the rest of my life. We'll see. So when DX Racer came out with a gaming desk, I'll admit, it raised a couple of eyebrows, including mine, because, you know, I mean, first off, 
it sounds like it's somewhat of gimmicky marketing where it's like, you know, oh, a gaming desk, you know, put gaming in front of anything and raise the price tag up and you're definitely going to um, get a couple of eyebrows raised. You know, especially now that the, um, the PC gaming world and the gamers in general are just a lot more conscious about where they put their money. A uh, gaming desk doesn't really sound like something too practical. Until I did my research and then I looked into the gaming desk specifications on their website and I saw the dimensions of the desk and then I thought to myself, you know what, this actually seems interesting. Now, like I said before, I'm a very tall person and tall people need tall accommodations. Now, even though you guys are seeing my um, chair right now, I recently moved into this apartment and this desk, as you can see right here, is a bit small for me. In fact, this desk is so absurdly small that I actually had to um, raise how high the desk was. Take a look at this. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Now this desk, if you look at the feet right here, I mean, you may not be able to see that too well, but um, you can see that I put little cardboard blocks underneath the um, feet of the desk, so that way it can be raised a bit higher so I can work you know, more comfortably on it because when I was using this desk without the feet on it, it was a nightmare trying to get anything done on this desk because I couldn't fit. But yeah, I put these under the desk to make things, you know, more tall. You know, even with that little DIY fix that I had for the table to raise the height, it's still not tall enough. And I feel like if I make it any higher, I'm going to work with stability issues. So this was a big negative in my eyes. So I, now I have this premium chair, which I can sit at for over 12 hours at a time. And I'm not joking there. This chair I can sit in for basically the entire day and not feel any pain whatsoever. Um, very minimal strain. It's a very good chair, but the desk is obviously lacking. This is not going to be suitable for me for the long term. And I did start to think, you know, what other options do I really have out there? And then I remembered DX Racer's gaming desk. Now, considering that their chair was so premium, I did give them the benefit of the doubt and say, you know what, their desk might just be the same quality. It might just be the same, you know, standard. So therefore, I should take a chance on it. Now, the problem with this is that there are no reviews for the DX Racer gaming desk gaming table on YouTube right now at the current moment. And it kind of sucks because it doesn't really give you too much perspective on what the product is or how well it is or, you know, anyone's thoughts on it. There's no review on the website and on top of all that it seems like it's the same exact product that was in the prototype form when it was shown at CES so I'm a little bit concerned about the chair I mean excuse me about the um, desk in that regard but I do know that it's the X racer and I do trust the X racer as a brand after getting an amazing chair like this so I'm willing to take the chance for you guys. Now, if you're wondering how much the desk costs, it's around $400, and there is only one size of it currently, and there were a lot of promises made at the CES booth. For example, Welcome to the DX Racer booth, where we're checking out the DX Racer gaming table, although that's not even an official name because this thing is definitely a prototype. It's a prototype. Some of the photos that I've seen of their, of their like, hopeful later on prototypes are actually quite a bit different. Again, this desk doesn't currently have cable management options once you're through the hole, but it will by the time it gets to you. I was talking to one of the guys, they're going to have like tracks under the table and stuff so you can manage your cables more cleanly. It's going to be height adjustable, although the mechanics for that aren't necessarily finalized. We don't know how height adjustable it will be, but it will be height adjustable. There will be larger sizes of the table as well, so if you need more gaming space or less gaming space, if you're in a tight area, you can get a different size table. So I was expecting a lot out of this desk, and I'll be able to let you guys know if any of those expectations um, stand up. But for now, I really want to get into unboxing this thing. Now, I actually have a big ass box over there, um, and I'm I'm really excited to actually to get this desk running because the one that I have right now, not only is it you know low to the ground, but it's really small. You know, it has a really small, um, really small vertical space. You know, there's no real estate vertically at all, and even though it does have a nice little curve. It's not really that useful because, you know, this section of the desk, I kind of have all my um, gaming peripherals and whatnot. And plus, this desk is glossy, so it kind of gets, you know, dirty, you know, dust. Well, dust will happen anywhere, but I mean, it gets fingerprints on it. I'm not really feeling this desk too much. It was nice for the time that I needed it, but now that I'm going to be posting my YouTube videos a lot more regularly, I moved into this great new apartment, and I got this great chair already to be able to sit down for hours on end and make the content for my dudes, I got to get a desk that's suitable. So, you know what? Um, without any further talking, let's just get into the DX Racer gaming desk and determine for ourselves if it is truly worth the premium that you pay to get this thing. Let's get into this thing. Now, like I mentioned before, the reason why I got this desk is mainly because of the size of it. Now, when I measured the dimensions on the website, I saw how massive this thing was, and I knew for a fact that I definitely wanted to try it out. I didn't exactly have the money at the time because um, I did just move, like I keep saying, so a lot of my money is limited with furniture and whatnot, but with my setup and with my um, career choice and whatnot, I feel like you know, money invested into my YouTube channel 
is money well spent because it means I can sit down longer and do more work and put more ideas, interact more with viewers and all that shit. So um, I'm hoping this investment pays off. So alas, I finally finished assembling the DX Racer gaming desk. And when we speak about the assembly, it was surprisingly difficult. Now, if you're looking behind me, obviously you can see this couch, and I put this thing together myself, but in some ways, this desk was a bit more difficult to put together than the couch. Now, even though DX Racer did include some very easy to follow instructions, I got to admit, sometimes they threw you off a little bit. I mean, the main way that they go about it is the instruction manual goes horizontal. So I was reading it from vertical at one point. So sometimes parts were appearing on the instruction um, diagram that I didn't see at first. So maybe that's just a mistake on my part more than DX Racer. But other than that, the instructions were pretty simple and straightforward. Um, there were also a couple of things with the assembly that I noticed which threw me off a bit. Now the DX Racer gaming desk, in this part here where it has the slanted elbow rest, or armrest rather, there were some scratches on the part which is glossy. So I noticed that that was some damage that came with the desk. But other than that, there really wasn't anything else. And I know this wasn't damage that happened when I took it out of the packaging because it was all wrapped up into the foam. So I mean, um, some something to know right there. Along with the very minor damage that the desk has on it, there were also some missing screws with the table as well and a missing wrench part to screw them in. Now. Normally this would be a really big gripe of mine, but one thing that I noticed is that you kind of really didn't need them because this table is built solid. And, and it's funny how I talk about the part with missing screws because in actuality, this table is really heavy. Now, of course you can see the size of it and I'm a big person, but this table is huge. And every single piece of this table either has solid metal or very solid wood or solid ABS plastic. And the quality of these tools that they use, these materials that they use are really high. As you can see here, even though this desk really looks big, it's actually extremely heavy as well. I believe the desk comes in at just around um, 85, 85 to 80 pounds. So it's a lot of weight for a desk. This can actually be reassuring to some of you guys because it's not like I put together a million desks in my lifetime, but this one is definitely the most solid and sturdy feeling one out of all of them that I've ever owned. So that is definitely a plus, maybe a negative in some people's eyes if they want a more lightweight solution. But if you're going for a desk, then why go lightweight? And if it's something especially you use for gaming, then you're definitely going to need to do it up big. And just telling it like I see it, this desk does have very premium quality materials. Nothing here feels like it was budgeted or cheaped out on, and that's one thing that DX Racer does very well. Even though you pay a lot of money for their products, you do get a very nice return in the quality of the materials used. However, there are a few things to notice with this gaming desk that did disappoint me a bit with the assembly of it. Now, in the Linus Tech Tips video, it was identified that there would be some features of the gaming desk which I was looking forward to just for the sake of DX Racer doing them, but they didn't make it to the build that we have right now. Which leads me to say that this is definitely the prototype, prototype. 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 that was shown off at CES in Linus Tech Tips video about the desk. As you saw earlier in this video, there were some features that just didn't make it to the final product, which include height adjustment and grommets underneath the table for making your wire management a bit easier. And although Luke did specify that this desk was a prototype, this build of the desk at CES was a prototype that was going to be improved upon, I don't really see any differences from this desk and the one that was shown at CES. Does it mean that this desk is automatically a failure in my eyes? Does this mean that this desk automatically is not worth the money? No, not necessarily. I'll, I'll need some more time to come to that conclusion or not. Clearly on their website, they don't list these features of the table, and I understand that, but I was hoping in some form or fashion that some more features from the desk would be added um, apart from the CES prototype that was shown, but at the end of the day, all we did get was a CES prototype of the desk in full. So when you think of something being classified as a gaming desk, what exactly does it have in terms of features or 
you know, specifications that make it worthy of that title. Well, the main thing that this table seems to bring to the table is wire management, cable management, and trying to make everything look as pretty as possible. As you can see here, the table features two grommet-like structures. I don't know if they classify themselves as grommets because I know grommets usually have the rubber material, but two holes in the table itself, which will be really good for wire and cable management, which will allow you to run them straight through the table rather than over the table, which could ruin the aesthetic. And considering that a lot more people nowadays are going for a more polished look with their setups and their builds, this is something that can be really highly valued. It's highly valued to me because I usually like to go with a much more clean look with my setups. I don't like wires being all over the place and hanging out all over the table. This organization fucks with me. So the fact that these holes are right through the table, they make it for some clear, precise cable management. The only thing that I wish is that it had a couple of more of these. But it does have another form of cable management in the form of these two holes right here at the top of the table where the border is. And these holes can also be used for cable management. So in total, you get around four um, dedicated places for cables to run through, which can make for some pretty clean looking cable builds, I believe. Because let's just say you have a speaker, you can route it right through here, the cable that connects both of the speakers together rather than having it sit on the table, which like I said, can help with the clean look. And something else that seems like it'll help with the cable management a lot is this nice little back cover on the table, which is on pretty snugly, if I do say so myself. The, this back cover here, now I did want to flip this thing around so that way the black DX racer part would face me since this is going to be against the wall. So that way it will look a little bit more appealing rather than just the white background. But you know, we'll experiment with that. I'll see if I want it flipped around to the front or not. So not going off of what was said at CES and just looking at this table for what it brings right now. Is it worth the money? Is it worth the investment? I really cannot say for sure right now. I'm definitely going to need a lot more time at the table, but one thing that can be said for sure at the moment is that it is quality material. This thing is extremely sturdy. I don't feel like it'll break on me. I don't feel like it'll fall apart on me. Even though some screws were missing in what they sent me, it's solid. You can move the entire thing without anything falling apart. It's a really good build. The main things that I'll be looking for in my future reviews of this table is just the ease of use, um, the height adjustment, if it's going to be an issue or not, um, how well this slanted panel here will do for me, and other things like that. One big thing to note, however, is the fact that on their website, they said that the table was at a 10 degree, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on that one. I'll show you pictures, obviously, of that. But they said that the table would be on a 10 degree sloping angle. And from what I've observed, even though it does seem like it has a sloping angle due to these side borders here, which are all made of ABS plastic, by the way, they seem like they give the table an angle. But in reality, when you look at the build of the table itself from the side, the table is not slanted in the slightest from what I'm seeing. Maybe my eyesight is off, but it seems like the slant is more of an illusion with this table rather than it actually being slanted. And it's not something that you can adjust either. So that's something to note there. Maybe I'm going crazy. Maybe it is actually slanted, but from when I was putting it together and when these borders weren't on the table itself, I didn't really see a slant there. But that, once again, could be my perception, but you saw the footage yourself, so that'll be up for you to decide. I would have preferred for a slant to be there for it because maybe it would be a better to have everything kind of like leaning forward, but what do I know about ergonomics? Anyways, definitely stay tuned for future videos. I'm going to be doing a lot of follow-up with this desk to determine if it is really worth that premium price tag. Now, can you say that a table which just has a few holes cut into it and um, some holes in the back is worth the premium price tag? Like I said, can't say that right now, but one thing that can be said for sure is that this table looks really pretty. So, a guy like me being based entirely off of aesthetics and functionality, this table could very well be a hit for me, but once again, I don't know. We're going to see in the future. I want to determine if the table is really worth that $400 price tag and make sure that I can bring the results to you guys so you know if this is something worth spending money on right now. For some of you, it may not be a practical option. Like I've said before, the only reason why I am deciding to go premium with the price tag for these certain things is because these are where my income is generated from and I have to make sure that premium quality is brought to that. You know, in the very least that, you know? I mean, there's some things that I skimp on in other ways, but when it comes to your setup and your desk, you have to make sure that you're working with the best of the best, or at least close enough to it. And if DX Racer isn't really that good of a bang for the buck, then you can spend your money elsewhere a lot better, then maybe that might be the best option. But once again, we'll see in the future if this is really worth that premium price tag or not. Anyways, guys, thank you for tuning into the video. Let me know what you think of the comment section below, and I'll be trying to answer any other questions that you may have in regards to this desk. Considering that there's really not that many reviews out there of the desk at the current moment, I really want to be able to shed some light on this thing because their chairs, I feel like, are worth it. 
Are there desks in the same league though? Who knows? I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care of yourselves. And of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.